Hi folks! There are few things more enjoyable than a nice cup of tea. And I thought I might talk a little bit about that today. Now, it seems to be something of a rite of passage for many British YouTubers where they demonstrate how they make their preferred cup of tea. Now, for most British people most of the time, it's a reasonably straightforward process. It's almost assumed, but uh, some of you have asked and, uh, well, uh, I thought I might oblige to uh, let you guys know how I personally make my cup of tea. Now, I'm going to be talking a little bit about tea maybe in some future videos, but to really understand the true concept of tea, especially from the perspective of a British person, it really helps to have a baseline, a gold standard, if you will, for uh, how uh, any given person expects a cup of tea to really look at, at the most essential utilitarian basic level. So uh, without further ado I thought I might just demonstrate firsthand how I make and enjoy a cup of great British tea. Hi folks and welcome to my kitchen. Now uh, before I begin I do apologize if there is some reverb when it comes to the acoustics uh, but that is the territory we're in when it comes to recording audio in a kitchen. We'll just have to make do best we can. Now I'm just going to be demonstrating how I personally make a cup of tea. There are of course many variations to it but uh, it's rather straightforward and standard as far as uh, it comes to making a British cup of tea at least. And now I've got my tea making equipment here. I've got a mug, I've got a jug of milk, I've got a teaspoon. Here in the background I've got just a standard electric kettle and a big old box of tea. Now uh, these are PG tips but personally I am not a particular loyalist when it comes to any brand of tea uh, but I do advocate for buying at least one of the quality brands uh, in fact, when we were at, at university, uh, me and, and my housemates used to uh, buy an entire semester's worth of tea bags uh, straight up front. So we always knew that we had quality tea uh, ready, despite however uh, many financial shortcomings we might find ourselves in. So uh, I'm just going to uh, boil the kettle and uh, I'll be back with you once that's completed. Okay, so the kettle has now boiled. Uh, I've just adjusted the camera angle so that you get a slightly better view of the tea making process. Now, I'm just going to uh, put uh, one pyramid bag inside of the mug, simple as that. I'm going to fill up the, uh, the mug to quite full. Uh, you typically want to leave a little bit of room for milk, but, uh, but not really very much. You really only want a dash of milk uh, and then just give it a bit of a stir. Gentle stir, you want to ease out the tea. Now some people do advocate for just letting it uh, stay uh, in, the, uh, in the water there for a while. But to be honest, when it comes to making tea, I tend to get impatient. So, um, so I just, uh, you know, ease it along, ease it along. Now there are people who advocate putting the milk in first when making tea using a teapot but this is a very utilitarian way of making tea and uh, I would say uh, not to speak for anyone other than myself but I would say this is probably the way most British people make a cup of tea especially when it comes to making just a cup for one. Now you're supposed to ease the bag out and just lift it out like that but uh, to be honest uh, I just tend to give it a little bit of a squeeze. You're not really supposed to do that because you can sort of ease too many of the tannins out. But there we go. And then you then just remove the tea bag. Add in just a small dash of milk. But it really is just a small dash. And then just give it a gentle stir. Now the colour is going to be the primary indicator of how strong it is and um, and what you can expect out of the taste to a degree. But you do kind of want that uh, sort of uh, deep beige colour. Uh, but some people would prefer something along the lines of more a more terracotta or something along the lines of a cream, depending on what your particular uh, 
preference is. But for me, I just like something very standard, very middle of the road, not too strong, not too weak. Uh, I tend not to like sugar. In fact, I really don't like having sugar in my tea. In fact, well, if I might say something a little controversial, I find it a bit barbaric, savage even. But uh, nevertheless, this is, uh, yeah, this is, this is a brew as I enjoy it. And uh, it really is as straightforward as that. No fancy tricks, no uh, tea straining or anything like that. Just a simple brew. Ah, nice. And it's still warm. And given that I had to move my uh, filming rig from the kitchen over to here, that's quite a pleasant surprise. So, uh, there are a few things that I neglected to mention in that video, and I do hope the reverb wasn't bad. Uh, I didn't uh, have a chance to review the footage before filming this uh, summary. So yeah, there are a few things that I neglected to mention. First is that I didn't prime the mug. Now this is a term among your more enthusiastic tea makers and basically what that involves is just filling the bottom of a mug with boiling water, allowing it to heat the mug itself and then emptying the water from the mug before carrying on to create your cup of tea. Now this generally speaking allows your tea to remain warmer longer uh, and is uh, is something quite uh, quite of a practical nature there but since I'm like I say doing a very utilitarian approach to uh, making tea this is how I make tea in a day-to-day -day scenario I tend to forego the procedure because I have no interest in prolonging uh, how long it is before I can actually start drinking my cup of tea. And yes, fortunately enough, this tea is still warm even though it's been just a short few moments uh, since actually recording that footage. So, and it, But it is the same cup of tea. So uh, it's not to me an essential part of the process, but it is something that uh, tea making enthusiasts often advocate for. Second of all, of course, I neglected to mention the type of milk that I use. Now, it's really just semi-skimmed, and I know that people have their personal preferences in regards to the type of milk that they like in their tea. For me, I don't have a strong preference. If I'm using uh, skimmed milk, for example, I'll probably use more and, uh, and then let the tea bag brew longer. And if I'm using full fat milk, then I'll probably have a smaller amount of it in my tea. But really, it's all about balance and, uh, and moderating the particular level of ingredients to satisfaction. It's really as simple as that. Uh, so, um, yeah, uh, I, I did a little bit of research before making this video, looking at other uh, tea uh, making videos, and it does seem, in a strange kind of way, as something of a rite of passage for many British YouTubers that they have to have a video of, of them making tea for, for some reason. Um, I guess I don't know. It's, it's a meme. That's, of course, it's a meme. They're always, it's always the memes. But one thing that I did notice among many tea enthusiast YouTubers is the idea of this perfect cup of British tea, this perfect cup of English breakfast tea, being uh, made with like a lot of care, a lot of attention, uh, using loose tea and then, uh, you know, using a tea strainer and, uh, and, and using the, uh, the teapot as well. Uh, and, and a lot of these, are they do sort of uh, make for a more satisfactory cup of tea at the end of the day. But most British people who drink tea uh, probably are not going to go through all of that bother time and time again uh, when they drink several cups of tea a day. I mean, there's just not enough hours in the day. And as much as we all love tea, uh, it's just, you know, not practical in that regard. Now, you know, there are special occasions and sometimes if you're enjoying company, then you might want to go down the avenue of, of using a teapot, of using loose leaf tea, of using something, you know, a more elaborate uh, method. But for most uh, cases, uh, most times of the day, uh, the method that I demonstrated today is, uh, is more than suitable. As I said in the original footage, uh, it, to me, it doesn't really matter what brand of tea you have. I do tend to get acclimatized to brands over time. So if I were to be on PG Tips for a while, which I am, and then suddenly moved over to like Twinings or Typhoo or something like that, then I would probably notice it for, uh, for a day or two. Uh, and there would be like, you know, a sort of adjustment period, but it would still be a pleasure to drink. It's just that you seem to go into like a rhythm of, of expecting the certain nuances of each individual brand. And they're different, but as long as you buy quality tea, uh, that is uh, the essential part. That's like a name brand. What you don't really want to do, 
uh, is to buy just like the cheapest that, that your supermarket has to offer. You don't want to buy those supermarket own brand basics brand of tea because they will disappoint unfortunately and uh, and as I mentioned before at university we used to uh, buy our entire semester's worth of tea up front so therefore if we ever came up short on the cash we would never be tempted to um, to do the unthinkable and actually just skimp on tea because you know tea keeps morale up and that's what you need when you're you know facing exams and you're writing dissertations and things like that you need to keep your spirits up and and it wasn't like it was a particularly expensive idea but you know what students are like at managing their money and you know I was no exception you know managing money is a learned skill of course it, it's not something that you can suddenly wake up and do it's not you know it's, it's not like a, a new year's resolution will fix everything in that regard it's um it's, it's something that you've got to practice at and it is difficult but certainly a skill uh, worth uh, learning and achieving and um, and getting good at if you ask me uh, some people ask uh, you know, uh, Chris, you're you're quite uh, quite careful with your money. You're certainly no spendthrift. What's your secret? And uh, to those people, I generally let them know that I use GNU Cash, which is of course a free and open source uh, cash management utility. It's a it's a program for managing your finances. Available in most Linux distributions, and I believe available for some of the other desktop based operating systems, uh, where you can actually just um, keep records and make projections of your income and expenditure and your assets and all that kind of stuff and um, it's definitely made my life uh, substantially more organized as well when you know where your money is coming in from and where your money is going uh, it does give you a bit of a it gives you a bit of a better scope I think the thing about tea that is particularly enjoyable is that it has this very rich sort of almost earthy taste uh, very substantive but at the same time it doesn't really have much in the way of calories or anything like that it's you know rather quite good for you it doesn't have too high a caffeine content um, so it's one of those pleasures that's genuinely well I don't want to say genuinely guilt free from a from a health perspective there is certainly uh, a case of having too much tea but for the most part in moderation tea is a is a nice um, choice and it's uh, and it's, it's perfectly healthy in that regard now uh, for my vegan friends among you uh, my personal recommendation when it comes to substituting milk is soy milk uh, I've never really had much success when it comes to you know rice milk or almond milk or anything like that uh, some of you guys may of course have different preferences but uh, when it comes to just looking for a replacement of milk um, I, I think soy milk is probably the the next best uh, option that you've got there. Unfortunately, and it does pain me to say this, that uh, when it comes to 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 milk, though dairy is by far and away the the superior option when it comes to taste and experience. I've got to be honest. I've just been filming myself just drinking this cup of tea now and uh, and thinking of things to witter on about. It has actually been quite enjoyable here, just having having a bit of evening tea uh, with, with you folks. It's, uh, it's been a pleasure. But I think it's about time that I wrapped up this video. Please, of course, let me know how you enjoy your tea down in the comment section below. And, um, and if you have any particular favorites, I mean, I've gone, of course, with the standard PG tips. It's a very common brand here in the United Kingdom. But of course, that that is just a very very standard uh, way of making and drinking tea and even choosing uh, you know the particular components of it. Uh, I may in the future address some more exciting teas, maybe some loose leaf teas. Um, I often get given teas as uh, as gifts um, so from friends of mine that travel, so it might be quite enjoyable to actually just review a couple of those from time to time. Um, but anyway, thank you guys very much for joining me. It's been an absolute pleasure having tea with you and uh, I'll see you guys soon. Uh, until next time, I've been Chris Ware and you've been awesome. Toodaloo.